you guys did the uh, Monica Montgomery steps into office. That was headline. Jacob. I'm sorry. At she first, like, through. deleted it, and then I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm feeling wild. <laughs> I I looked at that, and I'm like, no. <laughs> and then I was like, I, it kind of grows I can't, on you. I can't take that from them. <laughs> They're probably really excited. I, I, wrote, just, I wrote two I options. Back, he I, did. He wrote I erased it, and then I said no, and then I put it back, and then I was like, I can't do this. Scott's been making a concerted effort to be cool lately. And <laughs> he I has. Appreciate I've it. considered <laughs> being cool before. <laughs> <laughs> so I let it go. Monica Montgomery steps into the supervisor's seat. Good job. You I guys. was worried like someone was going to, I don't know, email us something mean, but no the, one did. The so. city councilwoman, Monica Montgomery, steps. She represents District 4 on the San Diego City Council. Now she represents District 4 for the County Board of Supervisors, a much larger district, actually, much less controversial uh, opportunity. Much higher paying job. It's a quite a. It's a good gig nice. if you can get it. How much? Get, how much higher paid are they? Like fifty grand. Wow. Or something. I I haven't double checked. I they used to get about one hundred and fifty. Now the city council got a little bit of a raise from seventy. Used to be double. Get uh, about. I think it's about fifty percent more. They get a driving allowance of like twelve grand a year, and it factors into their pension, which they get. Wow. Uh, they get Wait, like a, a uh, yeah, like uh, they get a lot, and because they don't have to deal with the sort of uh, short the short term kind of acute land use dilemmas that that really plague city council decisions. I mean, eighty percent of what the city of San Diego deals with, as far as public dis- debate, is about what to build where, right. and the county board of supervisors have much less areas hmm. much fewer areas that they have to make these decisions about right and so frankly they just don't make a lot of very difficult decisions. now during covid it was different it got a little more intense and mm-hmm. people figured out what the what the what the county does but essentially they, they basically do decide all these big budget issues social welfare they're going to care a little bit more about homelessness that kind of thing but it's still under the radar Role. Nobody knows what the county supervisors do. They go, if you're running for county supervisor, half your job is to tell people you meet what, what it does. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like when you say I work for Voice of Safety. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. cut that out. <laughs> it's kind of true. Oh, Scott. <laughs> fucking shiv me <laughs> while we're <laughs> <coming. laughs> So... So uh, anyway, yeah. So she gets a she gets a promotion, and uh, good for her. What did you think about the rate? Anything surprised? She got about sixty percent of the vote. Mm-hmm. Amy Reichert, the Republican, got about forty percent. All kinds of lines, all sorry, all basically lines up with how the race went with Nathan Fletcher before. Yeah, same percentages pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Nathan Fletcher got a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, Amy did a little better this time. But yeah, not not a mu- not enough to change things. Now she she put out a statement saying we were outspent, we performed a little better than our numbers might indicate. Mm-hmm. That's all we really wanted to do. We're going to keep working on making a difference. Here. So she didn't really want to win. No, she's all, she's all <laughs> I mean, it seemed like it was going to be a cakewalk. It was a little bit of a cakewalk. But you know, Monica Montgomery stepped first black woman ever on the county board of supervisors. I saw a picture of her, Tara Lawson Reamer, and Nora Vargas. Mm-hmm. All like it was a pretty candid shot. Mm-hmm. It was a good shot, and it was kind of cool. It's like, oh, the Democratic majority on the county county board of supervisors is like all women, yeah. like a black woman, a Latina, a white woman. It was like, oh, this board has changed immensely, yeah. even in the years that I've been reporting in yeah. San Diego, because it used to be like five white Republican dudes, right? Well, well, well they weren't all dudes. There was a woman. Well, and she's there was only a woman, she's right? only the second <laughs> black supervisor ever, right? There was Leon two Williams. <laughs> Yeah, Leon Williams. He was yeah. the, he was the first black supervisor in the eighties. Yeah, and so it took what over a hundred years, a hundred and yeah, over a hundred years to elect a black supervisor. It's uh, like fifty. Oh, you mean before that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just grind to a halt. <laughs> <laughs> Just when he checked your math. And- he checked my math Threw and found my math was know. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, we are screwing the set so up pretty is, night. <laughs> so what does Amy do now? Where does she live? Do we know? Mm, I don't know. I I, I think like, <laughs> God, I, have no, I have no idea. Like, I, could, I was going to try and hazard a guess, but 
No. Let's Wonder guess. if she'd let's like find run out and locally. then let's guess, or okay. let's guess and then we'll find out. I'm gonna say Talmadge. Yeah, I gotta go with like uh, Mission. No. Or La Mesa. I would Those say La Mesa. Guesses. I don't know why I think La Mesa. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a it's a La Mesa or a, a Navajo like a San Carlos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say University Heights. I'm gonna go off. Is that even in the district? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I'm in the district. <clears throat> so we'll have a lot of questions about what she's going to try to do on the board. Is is Nora Vargas going to remain chair? Are they going to rotate it around a little bit? Uh, what kind of priorities does she bring? She she talked a lot about wanting to keep the focus on criminal justice reform, on uh, accountability. The police went hard to try to stop her oh, from yeah. winning. Does she, uh, you know, still push that agenda forward? There does she hold off or oh, obviously they she doesn't care what they think <laughs> anymore <laughs> as far, i mean she cares about the the employees but mm-hmm. as far as the interest groups and what they were trying to pressure uh you know she's she's certainly not accountable or not beholden to anyone like that right. so uh i'm sure the the public employee unions the the seiu and some of the other supporters are pretty stoked about this situation um but there'll be a lot of big decisions going forward. And, and the county is is now, like we talked about, much more in the spotlight than it was before about homelessness issues, behavioral health and all those. And it is a very quick rise to, to you know, a seat that's has a lot of power. I mean, even if it is sort of under the covers kind of power, uh, what she was first elected in 2018 and five years later, she is one of, you know, the five board of supervisors members i mean that's 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 very quick yeah. i had i had a, a consultant tell me the other day that the the that nathan fletcher we, up or down whatever you think about him made the county a lot more cool mm-hmm. for these politicians and they think of it as a lot higher status now yeah as a lot has a lot of potential a lot of money and it's just a it's a m- more highly valued position like than it was before. yeah yeah now so that brings up the question of who runs in her sp- place to to take the county or the city of san diego's spot i know of a few potential candidates uh so the mayor's office has one of their employees chida rebecca warren darby she's the daughter of dr john warren the po- publisher of the voice and viewpoint she published the voice and viewpoint the african-american newspaper in southeastern san diego uh been around like 65 years or something like that mm-hmm. um they uh, she's been considering running she put up a cryptic uh, facebook post a, a couple months ago saying like the rumors are true oh. but Wait, that's was it a soft launch yeah soft interesting launch. speaking uh, of soft launches we we have i don't know at this point maybe 15 16 soft launches from shane harris yes uh, community yes. activist yes. and reverend yeah. yes. yes so the reverend shane harris uh he has made it clear he wants to run mm-hmm. softly yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, given the number of soft launches, I think we can consider it a hard launch at this point, right? Yes. Now, I think a lot of the establishment would get behind uh, Warren Darby, except there might be another candidate, Henry Foster. He's the chief of staff for Monica Montgomery Step right now. Interesting. And it's undetermined. I haven't heard yes or no whether Henry's going to jump in or not. If he does, it sets up a really interesting Todd Gloria world versus Monica Montgomery step right. world in that race. Right. Cause she would support her chief of staff. I'd assume. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I think there has been some rivalry and tension between Monica Montgomery step and the mayor's office. And <laughs> this would be like a pretty polarized. Yeah, right. Race. And then who's got more juice with, the democratic party who's got more juice with the unions in the district that may break differently but also yeah. i mean district four has been a place where where you know dark horse upstart candidates Monica have been Montgomery able to make their name was but exactly that herself, exactly right that. i mean her her election was a shock to many of the in the political establishment yeah yeah i remember we only detected it when we went to the voices of the voters and and asked people on election day in the mm-hmm. primary mm-hmm. Uh, about what they were feeling and and detected at that moment oh my gosh there's a lot of enthusiasm for monica Montgomery step she beat her in the primary that the incumbent myrtle cole but then they had to go to the runoff and, and then decisively won in the runoff. It was yeah. just a, a fascinating um, evolution of, yeah, she used to work for Myrtle Cole, quit after some comments about police and racial, uh, profiling. And racial profiling and then and then got in. Yeah, so 
I get. I think there. She used to get into some really interesting fights about education issues as well. Right. Um, she has. I think she's taken a little bit lower profile for the last year and a half or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see what she does when she moves to the county. That's what I'm very curious. Like, what version of supervisor Montgomery step are we going to get? Uh, because you know there have been periods on the council where she was not afraid to call a lot of people out and. You know, those were fun times. I'm going to be honest. I like it when politicians do stuff like that. I'm <laughs> sorry I'm showing my bias here. But, you know, when they do things and they say things that are interesting. It was like pop off. I mean, yeah, that's generally cool. when politicians just like do things, that's pretty cool. What do you, you think, know? Lopez? You've gotten to know her a little bit. Um, I think, I guess we'll have to see. But my guess is that she will be very outspoken. And I think at some point, you know, if maybe her and Nora talk about taking turns with the chair i think that would be really cool Mm. and i think she will be very outspoken if she does get into that role but we'll see but that's my sort of guess just from spending some time talking to her Mm -hmm. you know the the one thing we haven't touched on though was that this was very much a political like election you know whether or not montgomery step one uh, would have shaken up the balance of, of the Board of Supervisors in a really significant way. With with Nathan Fletcher's uh, vacating the seat, it became deadlocked at this 2-2 Republican-Democratic mm-hmm. um, you know, balance. And so her win uh, allows Democrats to continue to control that board. Until so, next year. Is Tara yeah, Lawson Reamer has the tightest seat, Scott? Yeah, yeah and <clears throat> she's facing the race from Kevin Faulkner. Kevin Faulkner, former yeah. mayor Big of San Diego. Big name recognition. Yeah, and, and they're they're banking on the fact that he has better name recognition than even the sitting incumbent, just mm-hmm. because, like I talked about earlier, people have no idea yeah, under what the, the county board has done. And sh- her district changed <laughs> quite a bit. Now mm-hmm. it, it reaches all the way down to Coronado. It used to be more concentrated in... Escondido and Encinitas. Now it's all along the coast, from you know Encinitas all the way down to uh, Point Loma and Coronado. So it's a much different district, and it's an area that Kevin Faulkner himself represented as a city council, and then of course as a uh, a mayor. So I mean, are yeah, there any that, tea leaves that, that you you've been reading lately about how how that may shake out? <laughs> well, they wouldn't be putting as much money and effort into Kevin Faulkner's uh-huh. race as they are if they didn't think he has a pretty solid chance and they would all say they they do now it's still an advantage for democrats it'll be a very polarized election he's got a lot of vulnerabilities he lost the chargers he's got the 101 ash street his buddy made 10 million dollars on a really corrupt deal he the skydiving center that he sold uh, or that he bought urgently to help homelessness there's a lot of things you can attack kevin faulkner on and I think she she comes from a political consultant family. Like they're ready to yeah. to do that. The mailers. He's just... gonna run though. I mean, he he. I think he's made. He's gonna run on. I did something about homelessness and it was working. Now whether people buy that or not is a different uh, abs- story. But so that is gonna be his big thing. And running for governor. Yeah, Isn't clearly that, that didn't doing? work when he ran that for governor. Like yeah, ago. but the governor's race is a lot more complicated. Trump was involved. How to navigate MAGA was involved. I don't, I don't, those complications will fall away a little bit. Not really. It's, that's all no. she's going to do is point to, like, <laughs> he, su- yeah. he supported Trump. Like, he, right. I mean, you have to imagine that 50% of the mailers are going to have that picture with him and Trump. Yeah. You know, they just kind of like make themselves. They do. The mailers. Yeah. Now that that said, she is probably the most vulnerable uh, up there. She's she's uh, uh, far, I think, a little bit more left than than the, the than the electorate. So you know, we'll see what they do and and how hard they hit her as well. So, yeah, that's going to be a fire, and that would just determine the balance of power on the on the race. And importantly, I think the biggest issue it would determine is how much homes you can build in the in the unincorporated area of san diego that's the big issue right and the truly like dynamic change that would occur under the current board they're they're, they're shutting it down like they basically said like no develop you know, in the back country n- n- not yeah. necessarily none but you're not going to get a lot of exceptions yeah right hmm. it, it's it's funny the difference between like what actually is at stake versus what the messaging will say is at stake. Exactly. Building yeah. in the back. It'll be is, all about Trump. It's not a sexy <laughs> issue. We need less homes in the in the rural areas of San Diego. It's not something that's going to mobilize a bunch of voters, right? <laughs> well, it'll, no, but that'll be that's the one of the biggest things you can point to. Absolutely. Yeah. 